The cause and effect of climate change isn't just about hot temperatures, wildfires and flooding, but also a marked and measurable increase in the insect population, and that includes ticks. Paula Tutman in Shelby Township for us to show us why we need to be doing things a little bit differently from now on. All right, Paula, fill us in. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so I'm in the middle of a little bit of dog madness right now, but what we're really talking about is the prevalence of ticks. We're so accustomed to checking our dogs for ticks and for things like that, but, but what we're really talking about is a change in the normal way we need to be operating because now we need to check ourselves. We gotta check our people. Here's the irony. Dogs and cats have topical and oral tick preventatives that keep ticks from latching into them. Kelly says that's why she thinks she had an unwanted hitchhiker. A manager at All American Pet Resorts in Shelby Township with pets of her own one day after walking her dog. Oh my gosh, I screamed so loud. My husband came running. It was, yeah, I was scared because you don't normally see them on you. Ticks have a foolproof way of traveling on the wings of birds and the bodies of mammals. And because of our climate and its changing, ticks have more time to set up, longer to find mates to breed, and warmer temperatures to thrive, says Christy Yee, the founding veterinarian of Hometown Vet Clinic in Rochester Hills. We are seeing a lot more exposure to ticks, meaning people in neighborhoods, apartment complexes. The bottom line is they're everywhere. Ticks need a host to latch onto for their blood meal. And if the cat and dog won't work, the human will. They don't have a long hatch cycle. They're actually dormant. They, are, they basically hibernate in their environment. And when I use 40 degrees as my little temperature check, if it's above 40 degrees, those ticks are active and moving. Dr. Anthony Anjan, the infectious disease expert from McLaren Macomb says, that's not a reason to panic, but it is a reason to be prepared. Lyme disease is a big concern for pets and people. The good news is in the Detroit Metro Tri-County area, it's not that prevalent, but Washtenaw County is seeing a rise. But Dr. Anjan says we have to put that in perspective for the entire state of Michigan. 2020, there were 400 cases, 2021, 800 cases. We don't know the data for 2022 yet. So when you consider how much time people spend outside, how many people get contact with ticks or don't become in contact with ticks, it's not all that common of a disease. At the end of the day, gone are the days when you just need to check your pet. Moving forward for the foreseeable future, when out and about, particularly in wooded and grassy areas, you now need to check your people. If you can wear light clothing, that's good so you can see the ticks crawling around. An insecticide is another secondary barrier that you can use. And after you're outside walking, then what you should do is go inside and check your body for ticks. Check under your armpits, the hairline, the groin. These are areas where you may not notice the ticks. So again, I really do want to make it clear, this is not a reason to panic. It is a reason to adjust so, oh, okay, I see you. So important to get your dog and your cat that preventative, that topical or oral preventative, because it keeps those ticks from latching in because it's a nerve agent. But keep in mind when those ticks fall off, they're looking for another warm body and that could be you. So again, you just want to make sure that you are checking yourself as much as you are checking your pets. Karen? Hard, I was gonna say it's a hard story to think about, but it's really so important to share and you're right. We've got to do a little bit more now. We appreciate it. Thanks, Paula.